Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the 2009 sci-fi horror flick Pandorum, which was directed by Christian Alvert, starring Dennis Quaid, Ben Foster, and Jay Trow, and Kung Lee. I'd actually uploaded this early last year, but it was taken down without my knowledge, and since I've had so many requests to cover this movie by people who haven't seen my video, I thought I might re-upload it with a few changes. Now, while the film was released in 2009, the script, written by Travis Milroy, had actually been in circulation since the late 90s, with the original plot revolving around a futuristic prison ship named Pandorum that contained thousands of the most ruthless prisoners from Earth that was so dangerous that they had to be transported to a prison planet called Tannis, similar to Fiorina 161 featured in Alien 3. With catastrophic system failures on the ship that in turn caused the hypersleep chambers to prematurely release the prisoners, who, over the course of a few thousand years, began a process of degeneration, the script had the feral cannibalistic hunters terrorise and feed off of the remaining survivors. With the help of Paul W.S. Anderson and Jeremy Bolt, who both founded Impact Pictures in the mid-90s, the project was greenlit in 2007 before Christian Alvert was brought on board to direct the film, who noticed some similarities to his own unproduced base-bound screenplay titled Nowhere, about four astronauts carrying settlers across the universe who begin to experience amnesia, plot points that would later be added to the final draft of the script. After blending the two films together, the word Pandorum was changed from the name of the ship to the mental illness the characters would suffer from as a result of the long-term space travel. Ben Foster and Dennis Quaid were then cast in the lead roles the following year, alongside Anjay Trow, Norman Reedus, and Kung Lee, who was given the perfect opportunity to showcase his mixed martial arts skills. The film essentially follows multiple people who wake up on board the Elysium, an interstellar arc containing 60,000 passengers, and multiple DNA samples of varying species from an overpopulated Earth that had been dealing with resource and food shortages. The ship is explained as being on its way to a distant Earth-like planet called Tannis, where humanity can have another shot at life. All of the passengers on board have been placed in hypersleep, with a rotating crew who take turns looking after the ship for two years before going back into hypersleep in time for the next rotation. The protagonist of the film, a man named Bauer, wakes up suffering from amnesia attributed to the long hypersleep and is covered in many layers of his own skin, indicating that he'd been there for a long time. With only a handful of memories that he doesn't truly understand, he soon notes that the ship is going through a power surge before a man named Peyton, believed to be his lieutenant, is also awoken from hypersleep. Peyton explains that it will take some time for their memories to come back due to the hypersleep, just as they spot tools beside the door, indicating that Cooper, another crewmate, had awoken earlier and tried to get out before them. The two are able to get the power up in the room they were in and make a broadcast through the ship looking for the previous crew that should have awoken them, but get no response, prompting Bauer to crawl through the claustrophobic pipes to try and open the doors from the outside. Based on the fact that they had a two-year service term and that they were the fifth crew, Peyton theorizes that the Elysium must have been just over eight years into its voyage, just as Bauer finds the remains of Cooper in the vents, leading to a way out. The engineer traverses the darkness and finds a woman trying to pry open one of the lockers, who runs away from him after being spotted. Bauer follows her around the corner and approaches a still figure whom he assumes to be her, only to find that it was a dead body that had been caught in a trap. We then see strange humanoid figures approaching him, illuminated with a bluish glow, who then give off a terrifying growl. The engineer is able to get a closer look at the cannibalistic beasts hunting him before running away and spots that although they had a humanoid structure, they were much shorter than humans, with long asymmetrical spikes that protruded from their backs. Haunted by the memory of his wife, and taunted by the reminder that the settlement project transported couples, Bauer becomes emboldened to find her before the creatures do. With Peyton as his guide, he makes his way to the reactor in an effort to repower the whole ship. His hands soon begin to tremble, leading him to ask Peyton if he'd ever felt the symptoms of Pandorum, which was the nickname for Orbital Dysfunctional Syndrome, a psychosis that was triggered by emotional stress, leading to severe paranoia and delirium. Peyton asks why he would even mention that, citing the Lost Eden mission, where the captain of the ship had developed Pandorum, leading him to eject all 5,000 of his passengers into space, believing the ship to be cursed. Bauer then finds another crew member named Shepard, played by the awesome Norman Reedus, Shepard asks him if he was part of an extraction team, only to realise that Bauer had only woken up and was just as lost and confused as he was. Shepard was also part of Crew 6, which was supposed to follow Peyton and Bauer's rotation in two years' time, adding more mystery to the circumstances. 
The man instructs Bower to mask his scent and tells him to run if he sees the creatures, as they were extremely fast and strong. But his advice is short-lived as he is soon captured by the creatures who proceed to eat him alive. This gives us a glimpse of their aggressive ingenuity, using wires and pulley systems to catch their victims, along with their incredible strength and agility, as they can be seen leaping great distances. Bauer eventually encounters a mysterious guy named Man, who saves him and explains that he worked in agriculture, indicating that many of the passengers, as well as the crew, had woken up prior to Bauer and Peyton. A brawl soon occurs between Bauer and the woman from earlier, before being interrupted by Man, the Kung Fu agriculturist, forcing the three of them to work together. The woman then reveals that her name was Nadia as she leads them to the ecology center and explains that when she woke up, there had been five of them who worked on the genetic sampling team, collecting the Earth's biosphere to function as a genetic Noah's Ark. Unfortunately, due to the power surges, 30% of their samples had been destroyed. She also informs them that they had been asleep for much longer than they think and that the creatures pursuing them had been on board the whole time, much to the disbelief of Bauer. Peyton then encounters a Corporal Gallo that crawls out of the pipes and seems disorientated. After checking the young man's wrist, he spots that he was a part of the previous crew, and also spots blood on him, leading Gallo to explain that it belonged to his crewmates, who had developed Pandorum, which forced him to defend himself. The three survivors then make it to a container and find another survivor named Leland that appears to be unstable, and who explains that he'd been there for a long time, before offering the group some food. Bauer speculates that those things chasing them might have come from the lab or even outer space, but Nadia informs him that they were actually human and were a direct result of the accelerator that people were being fed in the hypersleep chambers. The accelerator was essentially a synthetic enzyme supplied to the passengers through their feeding tubes to help them adjust to the slightly varied environmental conditions that were going to be found on Tannis. Unfortunately for everyone, the first few people that awoke adapted to living in the darkness of the malfunctioning ship instead. Peyton grows to distrust the young Gallo, who appears to be acting strangely, and prepares to sedate him, leading Gallo to explain what had really happened to them, while Leland, who was talking to the survivors from a safe height, simultaneously explains that during the fourth team cycle, eight years into the mission, the crew had received the last transmission from the dying Earth. The message was essentially one of encouragement to the Elysium, prior to the Earth's complete destruction, which had then disappeared off their radars. Leland tells the survivors that one of the crew members who were present for the transmission, who we find out was Gallo all along, had snapped and killed his crewmates before beginning to play God, envisioning himself as both the devil and creator. Gallo then awoke many of the passengers and banished them to the cargo hold with no food, which led them to turn on each other out of desperation. He then returned to his hypersleep chamber as generations of mutated humans roamed the ship, feeding on both the passengers that were randomly awoken by the malfunctioning ship and each other. Unfortunately for Bauer, Nadia, and Man, Leland gasses them before tying them up, revealing that he also fed on the passengers to survive by tricking them. The engineer eventually convinces Leland to let them go and joined them in heading to the reactor, as the ship was less than an hour away from shutting down permanently. At the same time, Gallo suggests to Peyton that they should launch themselves in the pods as the ship was bound to fail, leading Peyton to finally confront Gallo and contain him in the sleep chamber. The group then make it to the reactor, only to find that the mutated humans were using it as their den, leading to a few close calls before they finally get the reactor to turn back on. With the power fully restored, Peyton is able to enter the bridge and soon discovers that he and Gallo were actually the same person, and that he was suffering from Pandorum all along. Peyton sedates himself to restrain his inner Gallo, but the shock of knowing he was responsible for the atrocities that were occurring on the ship proved to be too much for his mind. Bauer and Nadia return to the bridge and find Gallo waiting for them, who then proceeds to open the shutters, revealing that the ship was adrift in space with no stars. He then attempts to manipulate Bauer, who is feeling the onset stages of Pandorum, and tries to convince him that they must allow things to continue as they were. It's at this point that Nadia spots bioluminescent life through the windows, indicating that they were actually underwater, with the computer displaying a message that they were 923 years into their mission, which essentially meant that the Elysium had reached Tannis 800 years prior. Bauer accidentally breaks one of the windows, sending the ocean water into the ship, which takes out Peyton and drowns the mutated humans, as both Nadia and Bauer climb into a hyperpod before being ejected. Luckily for humanity, the flood inadvertently triggers an emergency ejection protocol, launching all the active pods carrying the remaining 1200 passengers to the surface, revealing a beautiful coastline and the beginning of year one on the Tannis calendar. I thoroughly enjoyed this film, having picked it up on DVD many years ago, not really knowing what to expect. 
Though it was butchered by reviews upon its initial release, it's since developed a cult status among die-hard science fiction fans such as myself. Tying in the biblical references of Noah's Ark and the flood which eradicated sinful creatures in the Old Testament, with monsters reminiscent to those seen in The Descent, and the claustrophobic feel of the Alien film series, Pandorum is a solid sci-fi horror flick that I think was unfairly criticised by critics, preventing many people from taking the chance on watching it during its release. This can't be right. What? What's wrong? Someone's been through here. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who suggested we take a look at Pandorum. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.